Thanks for joining us to celebrate with our youth the mission trip from 2021. Today's announcements, welcome back to Wednesday worship. Join us for worship lasagna and salad this week. September 19th will be our first week of two services. Join us at 8 a.m. or 1015 a.m. and Sunday schools at 9 a.m. for everyone. Please join us. Dorothy Jeffrey's graveside service will be September 18th at 1030 a.m. Please remember in your prayers, the homebound, those in care facilities, our staff and their families, our church family, community friends, conference, denomination, and world leaders, those suffering with or worried about health, including COVID, our siblings in Christ in Haiti. Please join us in our call to worship. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Please join us in the unison prayer. Loving God, when we damage our relationship in order to demand our share, change our hearts to return to you. Welcome us with merciful and grace-filled arms when we come home. Forgive our sins and love us into new relationships as we forgive others and bring them to you. Amen. Our scripture reading from Luke 15, verses 11 through 24. Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. Then the father divided his estate between them. Soon afterward, the younger son gathered everything together and took a trip to a land far away. There, he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up his resources, a severe food shortage arose in the country and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I'm starving to death. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me as one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran to him, hugged him and kissed him. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fattened calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasts because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Good morning. Good morning. So I was reading this week one of my favorite stories from the Bible, the story of the prodigal son. Oh, I just love I, that one. Do you? I, lo I love stories. Oh, I just love me stories. too. Stories are fabulous. Absolutely. I have so many books. How many books do you have? Thousands. And I have even more on my Kindle. Oh, you do have a lot. Of I books. have a lot of books and I read them and read them and read them. Some of them I just read once, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you know what? But maybe it's time to do a little more cleaning. <gasps> Gleaning, cleaning? Gleaning, cleaning. Oh, excellent. If you've got that many books, you surely don't read them all again no i really don't and some of them are good but once i read them once or twice or sometimes 10 or 12 times mm -hmm. um i really don't need them anymore some of them i even know by heart oh yeah yeah so maybe it's time to get rid of a few books okay maybe 
Maybe we can get, maybe we can take some of our books to the sale mm -hmm. for the I kids in so. Haiti. I think so. And we can sell the books because people love books. They love books. And if we sell our books, we can get some money to help kids in Haiti and to save them from this mess that they're in right now yes. and help them out. Yes. And a book can do that. We can sell those books. Oh my goodness. Yes. What if we all brought our books from our bookshelf that we don't read anymore and we go through them and all the ones that we don't need, we put out at the sell, at and the bring sale it to the church and they could bring it to the church and and oh my goodness, we could help a lot of kids with those books. Yeah. More I'm cleaning, just, cleaning coming up. What if somebody only has like one book they don't read? Could That's they just okay. bring one? Absolutely. And what if somebody else has like maybe a thousand books they want to get rid of? A thousand. That, that would be great too. So whatever we have, we can That's glean we and take what we don't use and make it a blessing to Gosh. people who need it. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Wow. I think that's prayer worthy, Melanie. I do too. Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. I love your stories. I love your stories. Help me clean out my stories. Help me clean out my stories. So I may help other kids. So I may help other kids. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, clean out those bookshelves and do your best to bring in some good stuff. And you never know, we could help one kid, two kids, three kids. Who never knows? Know. What a great opportunity. We'll see you next week. Our scripture reading from Luke 15, verses 25 through 32. Now his older son was in the field. Coming in from the field, he approached the house and heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, Your brother has arrived, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he received his son back safe and sound. Then the older son was furious and didn't want to enter in. But his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, Look, I've served you all these years, and I never disobeyed your instruction. Yet you've never given me as much as a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returned, after gobbling up your estate, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. 
Then his father said, Son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is now found. Good morning. In a lot of ways, I think this text that the youth have been um, mulling over since our youth trip and since this was the focus of our youth trip has really hit home for a lot of us during this time of COVID in this time of coming back. There's a sense for all of us that something fundamental has changed and we don't like it, but we want to come home. We want things to be the way they were, but we also know like those characters in the story today that when we come home, things will be different. That's what the younger son has to deal with as he starts coming home um, he thinks to himself, well, you know what? I can't go back as a son, but maybe I can go back as a servant. At least I would have food. At least I would be cared for um, and not die. So maybe it'll be different and it's going to be hard, but I'm going to go back, even though it's going to be worse than it used to be. I don't know about you, but some of us have had that idea as we come back out of COVID that this isn't going to be the same. We know we're going to be coming back to something different. We know that there's going to be a change and we're probably not going to like it because <laughs> we don't like change, right? But, but it's going to be better than not surviving, and so we're going to take a chance and we're going to come back and we're going to see if we can do this, even though it's going to mean a lot of changes. That's the perspective of us coming out of this. That's the perspective of the younger son. But there's some other characters in the story, too, and they look at this change in a different way. So let's look at um, let's look at the older son. The older son says to himself, we're coming out of something. It's been a bad time for our family and we're going to come out of that. But I've been working this whole time. This other son went off, didn't have to work. My brother just took advantage of the situation. Now it's time for him to get his act together and he wants to have things as good as me when I've been working extra hard through COVID. Now I know there's some of us who've, who have felt that sting before too. This idea that we're going to go back to something, it's not going to be the same, but we will have done all the work necessary during this time that was so difficult and then other people are going to come back and just enjoy the fruits of our labors and that's a hard pill to swallow isn't it that's where the older son in the story is sitting 
But there's one more character to talk about, and that is the father. Now, the father is like, you know what? Let's just have everything be the same as it was before. Everything's happened. It's all changed. We'll go back to the way it was before. And it's going to be hard for people to accept. Maybe it'll be a little different. But we're going to just pretend this whole business never happened. And that's a whole different perspective. That's what it feels like from this story. Although I think there might be a little bit different interpretation of that father because he knows it's going to be different. He knows that his sons are going to have an issue. He knows that um, life is going to be different and challenging, but he also knows that some things have to go back the same. And the most important thing that has to return is our relationship with one another. That is primary when we start to look at going back, at returning home when we've been gone for a long time. Whether you're the younger son and you have to swallow your pride and say to yourself, you know what, it's time. Even if I don't wanna face where I am in life now. Or if you're the older son and you're thinking, I worked super hard and somebody owes me something. Or if you're the father who thinks, I just want us to be back in relationship with each other. And it won't be the same. I wish it were the same. But what matters is that we're okay with each other. I want us to think about these things as we come back from COVID. We, we talked a lot about it at the, the council meeting the other night. And, and here's the truth. The truth is we're all a little bit of these people. And the truth is we all are the one who wants it all to go back and be exactly the same. Only we know it can't happen. And we also deep down inside know it shouldn't. But the most important thing has to be what was most important in the story for the father. And that is things, things aren't going to be exactly the same. But we need to be okay with each other. We need to reconcile this with one another. Because if we don't, what are we coming back to? What are we offering other people a chance to come back to? Christians, we are about forgiveness. We are about love and mercy and respect for one another and care for one another. And we know this sad, true fact about ourselves. We have made a lot of mistakes. And somebody let us come back from that. God let us come back from it. Our parents let us come back from it. Our kids let us come back from it. Our community, our, our employers, whoever it is who's forgiven us for some of the dumb things that we have done, they've let us come back. And things, things weren't the same. They were always a little bit different after that. But our relationship, our relationship could still be good. And maybe, maybe that's the lesson for us in this season. As we look at, you know, things are going to come back and they're going to be different. 
and there's these other people who think differently than we do or act differently than we do, and they're not going to look at coming back the same way we do. They might look at it like an older brother, or they might look at it like a son or like the father. Um, whoever it is that they, that they are in our story, what is important is that we still value the relationship we have with each other. We look at things from a different perspective, but the situation is the same for all of us. And that is this, something fundamental has changed and there is no going back to a time when we didn't know that could happen. But one fundamental, even though there was time apart that should not change, it's our love for one another, our respect for each other, our forgiveness for one another, and our ability to say, we understand a different perspective that we didn't understand before. This is our story. This is our life. This is our world right now. And it's time to come home. Let's make sure that when we come home and when everyone else comes home and we come home to each other, we come home to relationships that withstand even this. Because God's relationship with us is able to stand up to anything. Our relationship with each other should be able to survive COVID. So Christians, welcome home. Love each other. Amen.
Go return home to love one another. Amen.